Morning, guys. Huh. I wasn't even going to do a broadcast today. I didn't have it in my mind to do it, but when I woke up this morning, I was just filled with inspiration, so I knew I had to. I've been, I'm going to talk, I'm going to put together a couple of things that I've been sharing this week. So if you had to title this, you might title it, All Things Are Lawful and All Things Are Right, and I Don't Have to Look for Evidence of It. That's what I would title it. That's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, so I've got coffee for reinforcements. But anyway, let's start with all things are lawful. What does that mean? Well, you could talk about it for days, but I'm not going to, obviously. Um, the Apostle Paul said, all things are lawful unto me. And I've heard that interpreted by some as meaning, well, I can just do anything I want. And it doesn't count against me. Well, if you're born again and you know how much you are loved by the Father, and you have a revelation of grace, you don't want to do anything and get away with it. That's not even your modus operandi. You have a different life than trying to do something and get away with it. So that's not the meaning of that. The meaning of all things are lawful is that Jesus Christ has fulfilled the law. And so now, whenever we do fail, there's no penalty. Oh, it looks like there is. It looks like there is. Because you see, the law of sin and death is a law of cause and effect. So it looks like when we make a mistake, it counts against us. But the Word says that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. So even when we fail, we know that the Lord will turn it for our good. when you've had the most desolate year of your life, and it looks like you've lost everything, he'll turn it for your good. So, that's part of the meaning of all things are lawful. It's a very rich phrase. It includes everything because it says all. Well, let's look at another example. In Luke 6, 9, Jesus said to the Pharisees, let me ask you one thing. Now, he could have asked them any number of things. But he said, let me ask you one thing. Is it lawful to save life or to destroy it? Is it lawful to save life or to destroy it? So since this is the one thing he wanted to ask them, it must be a very important question. And it is. Now, what is the background here? They were looking to accuse Jesus. They were looking to accuse him for healing on the Sabbath. And so 
he caught he knew their hearts and he called forth the man with the withered hand and as this man stretched his hand forth it was made whole just like the other one so he demonstrated that he asked the question is it lawful to save life or to destroy it and then he answered that question by saving the life in the man's hand he's saying yes it's lawful for me to save life i just want you to know that and in fulfilling the law that's exactly what he did he saved he did it for everyone and he saved everyone he saved the life of everyone Call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. So that saving is life. Saving life. Because if you think about it, that's the only thing that needs saving is life. Because it's all about life and death. You might, you might say, well... I need more money. No, you don't. You need more life in your finances. If you have more life in your finances, you'll have more money. You might say, well, I need a relationship. No, you don't. You need more life in your relationship. Because if it has life, it will continue to grow and prosper and develop in ways you can't imagine. Well, you see where I'm going here. So all we really need is life. That's the answer to everything. And by the same token, death is the problem to everything. So Jesus solved it by fulfilling the law of sin and death. We are no longer subject to that because the word says without the law, sin is dead. So that phrase, all things are lawful, amazing, amazing thing. Because all things are lawful, there's nothing against us. It's, um, Righteousness without the law is now revealed. And righteousness without the law is purely and simply the love of God for each and every one of us. The love of God for a dying world. There is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. Think about that. No penalty. No judgment. Because without the law, there's nothing to judge against. Nothing. So to know that you are free that there's nothing against you. The Lord is only with you and for you in every situation. Might not look like it, might not feel like it, but it is. So we don't have to pay attention to those things that look like we're being judged. We don't have to pay attention to those things that look like those penalties. If we have something in our body, it looks like there's a penalty against us. It's not. It's not real. It feels real. I know that. It looks real. I know that. But because of the Word of God, it's not real. Like I said yesterday, those things 
that look like they're against us. Those things have a life, but it's a life that's dying. The life that's in the word is an eternal life and is greater than the life in negative circumstances. That's why they can't, they're here today and gone tomorrow, or maybe here today and gone after several tomorrow. You get my meaning. So anyway, because of what God wrought in Jesus Christ and raising him from the dead, we are free from the law. It was the Father's intention all the time that we only be subject to grace. And because we are now free from the law, His righteousness and His grace are revealed. And we don't have to look for the evidence. Because we know all of these things are true. We know that we are loved. We've always been loved. And I'll tell you, um, we're living in an amazing time because we're living in a time when revelation is coming out about the Father. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. But revelation is abounding in terms of how much we've always been loved and that the Father has been misunderstood. You see, we were born under the law of sin and death and with the law is the knowledge of sin. So man was born with a knowledge of sin and so um, when Adam disobeyed, he didn't run to God, he ran from him. See, his heart was condemning him. And he, and he thought that because his heart was condemning him, because he knew he had failed, but he thought because his heart was condemning him that God was condemning him. And that was not true. And a lot of the things that you see in the Old Testament are written from the perspective of man's heart, that man is condemned, thinking that because he feels bad, that the Father feels bad about him. But that is just not true. Thankfully, we are subject to the love of the Father. We're subject to the love of the Father and the life of the Father because the law has been fulfilled. And since there is no law and no judgment, then we don't have to judge the evidence that we are saved, that our life is saved in every area. It's a freeing thing. It's a really freeing thing. And so I just had to share this, um, knowing that there's no law against us, so don't even, so since there's no law against us and we are free from condemnation, then don't, don't even think about wonder how it's going, wonder how I'm doing. See, it's already done. You're already complete in him. You're already complete in him because there's nothing against you. So if you want to look at anything, look at that. Look at Jesus. The word says um, that we are just as he is. Well, he's complete and we're complete in him. 
So I just wanted to share this with you this morning. And um, I hope it's been a blessing to you as it has to me. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.